Rudolf Pleyel, July 7, 1924, February 18, 1958, was a German serial killer known as Der Totmacher, literally, the dead maker. He was convicted of killing a salesman and nine women, but claimed to have killed 25 people. Many of his crimes took place mainly in the Harz mountain range. Biography Play Isle was born on July 7, 1924 in a small village, close to the border of former Czechoslovakia. His father was an industrial worker and communist. After the seizure of control by the Nazis, he was arrested and then moved with his family to the Czech town of Veperty. At the age of nine, Play Isle had to support his parents through border smuggling and was repeatedly arrested. He did not attend school regularly because he had to earn money for his unemployed parents and his sister. His brother died prematurely and his older sister submitted to forced sterilization due to her epilepsy, according to Nazi law. At the age of 13 he had his first sexual experience with a prostitute. In 1939, when he was 15, he left home and began working as a butcher, but broke off after a few weeks. He worked as a ship boy on barges on the Elbe and Loder. Here, too, he operated smaller, illegal businesses. In the summer of 1939 he was hired as a machine boy on a merchant ship to South America. After the beginning of the Second World War he came to the Kriegsmarine, where he was sentenced to one year in prison for theft. On October 26, 1943, he was found unfit for service due to epileptic seizures. After his dismissal as a waiter, but continued to suffer from seizures, which is why, according to a medical report, he was supposed to be sterilized. A bomb attack destroyed the operating room a few days before the scheduled appointment. Play Owl had previously conceived an illegitimate child, which was taken care of by his sister. Murders Play Isle became a cook in a labor camp, where he killed and ate cats. After the invasion of the Red Army, he was hired as an auxiliary policeman in his home village. During this time he felt like killing, as he shot at a Soviet soldier during a plundering operation and wanted to provide for his bleeding wound. Pleiad married a young woman who was expecting a baby from him. He quickly realized that this could not satisfy his urge and began to attack and harass women at night. He admitted to having committed some murders as early as 1945, but this could not be proven. After that, he worked as a sales representative and in turn made his own small business, which eventually led to his dismissal. In 1946, he moved from Zablitz to Zorj in the southern Harzi. Between 1946 and 1947, Play Isle worked as a frontier worker in the Harz and helped paying people, mostly women, to cross illegally to east and west. In these two years he slew and abused at least 12 women together with his two accomplices Karl Hoffmann and Konrad Schuler. On April 18, 1947, Play Isle was arrested after the robbery of the Hamburg businessman Hermann Benin, whose body was found by the axe that even dismembered in Zorjabach. Murders of women from 1945 to 1950, 13 police officers were murdered in the border area of this region, which led to the fact that police went on patrol only in groups. It was not difficult for frontier workers such as Blay Isle and his two accomplices to evade the patrols, especially as police responsibility at the zonal border ended and their course was not clear. In addition, the individual police departments, such as the Criminal Police AA and the police, did not cooperate effectively. So it came to an investigation of murders of women at the border area to a more serious one, as a Schutzpolizist from Wienenburg reported that body parts were found in a well there. In fact, the corpses of two women whom Play Isle had killed in that mountain were also found. Since no mention was made of this reference, Play Isle and his accomplices claimed at least three other women before his arrest. Only when Play Isle competed in a cell prison as an executioner, boasting that he had experience in the area of killing and had to find two of his victims in the Wienenburg well, he was charged with the murders of women in the border area. Pleil was ultimately convicted of these acts. 
1946 on July 19, he abused and killed an approximately 25-year-old woman in the forest between Walk and Reed and Elrich on the edge of Southern Harz. As a murder tool he used a hammer. On August 19, Play Island his accomplice Carl Hoffman lured a 25-year-old woman to the grounds of the freight depot in the upper Franconian border town of Hoff. Hoffman smashed her head with his knife while shaming her, before slitting her throat. On September 2nd, the two men met a 25-year-old woman crossing the border at Bergen. Play Isle slew her with a field stone, and Hoffman buried the body in the forest. In mid-September, they met a 25-year-old black woman from Trapstadt who was going towards the zonal border. Hoffman killed her in the nearby forest and robbed her, decapitating her corpse afterwards. At the end of November, Play Isle offered to guide a young woman to help her cross the border. In the forest between Elrich and Walkenreed he suffered from a strong alcoholized epileptic seizure. When he came to, the girl lay slain next to him. On December 12, Play Isle and Schuler robbed a 55-year-old widow near Nordhausen and beat her with clubs. The woman survived this attack, as the two had their sights on a liquor store. Later, she was a crucial witness in the trial. On December 14, Play Isle killed a 37-year-old woman in the guard booth of Wienenburg in the presence of Schuler, then threw her body in a well. Five days later, a 44-year-old widow fell victim to Play Isle and was also thrown into the well. 1947 On January 16, Play Isle and Hoffman offered a 20-year-old woman to take her to the East Zone. Play Isle slew her near the road that runs between Abbin Road and Stapleburg. The corpse was then thrown into a stream. In mid-February, Play Isle killed a 49-year-old woman in a forest near Dudersieben, with Hoffman robbing the corpse. At the beginning of March, Play Isle and Hoffman committed another murder near Zorge in the Soviet occupation zone. Hoffman killed the young woman with his knife and then separated her head. Her body was later found in the British sector. The beginning of the trial in the District Court of Brunswick was set to October 31, 1950. Prior to that, because Blay Isle was already sentenced to 12 years in prison on a manslaughter charge by the Landgericht Braunschweig. Background to the arrest The most frequent references to Rudolf Blay Isle came from the horrors, but also in other regions one knew about him and pointed towards this person. A resident of Hof, who maintained a small pension for returnees in the 1940s and was informed about the conditions on the border, thought that he still had an impressive memory of PLEIL. Play ILS arrest was initially not because of the murders of women, but because he had slain the merchant Herman Benin in a clash on the border crossing with a hatchet. Benin was his second male victim. The court found Play Isle's act as a manslaughter, as he was heavily intoxicated at the time. If he had been found guilty of murder, he would have received the death penalty. The remaining crimes remained unsolved, for which a superficial approach was shared by the police and judicial authorities. The fact that many of the victims were not from the area was also considered, as they were often people uprooted as a result of the war and post-war conditions. While in custody in cell, Play Isle finally confessed to further murders. In a memoir, he spread the gruesome details boastfully with the title Mein Kampf. He claimed to have committed a total of 25 murders, and thus one more than Fritz Harman, being able to call himself the greatest murderer of all. The accomplice's Karl Hoffmann, born in 1913 in Hausdorf, was a tailor of women's clothing by profession. He was considered brutal, callous and killed to get stolen goods. He died in prison in 1976. Conrad Schuler, from Lukersdorf, was an 18-year-old butcher. He was pardoned in the late 1970s. Trial Play Isle and his accomplices were persecuted by the press, at home and abroad. Foreign newspapers sent reporters. Play Isle caught the attention and tried to focus on it as much as possible. In his remarks in court he exaggerated shamelessly, which had corresponding press reports. The smiling Play Isle confessed in the so-called 
Brunswick trial to the numerous murders of women, boasting to have allegedly committed a total of 40 murders. Pleil was depicted as a murderous beast, with he himself speculating this would classify him as mentally ill. Then he would not have been sentenced to imprisonment, but instead, sent to a psychiatry. This process did not work out though, and three weeks after the start of the trial, on November 17, 1950, Play Isle and his two accomplices were each sentenced to life imprisonment for multiple murders. Play Isle hanged himself on February 16, 1958 in his cell. Witnesses and later analysis Judy Schultz, at the time a stenographer, described it as follows. Play Isle was then hardly older than she was and yet it was not possible to estimate his true age. His hair was already very thin, he wore small round glasses and spoke only broken German. However, she noticed that he always had a small folder with him, in which he apparently took notes. He also appeared very self-confident and stated that he was the dead man. She considered him, as well as the psychiatric reviewers, fully sane. Her conclusion was, he was a sadist and has every action before exactly adjusted. I find myself a woman, robbing her and then I make her cold. That was his logic. The guy knew exactly what he was doing. Eric Helmer, a former prison's recollect, remembered that he was allowed to visit Play Isle initially only in company, as this was considered dangerous. He was particularly reminded of one event. When he visited Play Isle, he sat in his cell crying and showed him a letter from England in which Christian women wrote that they were praying for him. On that day, Helmer received from Play Isle as a farewell three notebooks, which he had written in prison, a kind of diary entitled Mein Kampf, by Rudolf Play Isle, taught Makarad, in which he boasted of having committed 25 murders. Another font bore the title Without Mercy I Will Kill the Child and the Old Man, and after a hundred years one should still speak of me, it told of Blay Isle's youth and described his actions. The criminal psychologist Ulrich Zander said in his analysis of Blay Isle that he was not stupid, but rather very devious. A letter from Play Isle he examined showed a clear reflection of the ego of Play Isle and the overall picture of a murderer who considered it his special talent to be a dead maker. In 2007, the filmmaker Hans Dieter Rutsch filmed the documentary film Der Totmacher Rudolf Play Isle about the life of Rudolf Play Isle for the Dawes Earth series Die Groen Criminal Fall. Hell Mach. The daughter of one of Rudolf Play Isle's victims tells in a newspaper article about her mother's diaries. Literature Wolfgang Ulrich. The case of Rudolf Play Isle and Comrades. In Archive for Criminology, Volume 123, 1959, pages 3644, 101 110. Christian Zentner. Illustrated History of the Eden Hour Era. Munich 1984. ISBN 3-517-00845-1, P92FF. Gerhard Fikes. Death Came by Mail. From the History of the FRG Kripolo. Publisher Dawes Neue, Berlin 1988, ISBN 3-360-00197-4. Hans Pfeiffer. The Compulsion to the Series. Serial Murderers Without Mask. Militsky Publishing House, OA, 1996, ISBN 3-86189-729-6, online, p. 163 ff. Retrieved on May 30, 2014 Catherine Kompisch, Frank Otto, Monster for the Masses The Germans and Their Serial Killers. Militsk, Leipzig 2004. ISBN 3-86189-722-9. Catherine Kompisch, Frank Otto. Devil in Human Form. The Germans and Their Serial Killers. Boste Lub, Bergisch Gladbach 2006. ISBN 3-404-60571-3. Reinhold Albert, Hans Jorgen Salier, The Dead Maker Rudolf Bleil. In Border Experiences Compact. The Border Regime Between South Thuringia and Bavaria. Hessen from 1945 to 1990. Leipzig.
Heilberg Oz in 2009, ISBN 9783939611356, p. 277ff. Does the herring have a soul? In Der Spiegel, number 29, 1958, online. Playile Mimarin. Wilt Rodwaner Davin, The Case Rudolf Playile, Tot Makarad, in Criminalistique, Independent Journal for the Criminal Science and Practice 1985, pages 339-341. See also Fritz Harman. References External links The Dead Maker Rudolf Playile on DSERSTE.de Ferus Vladi. Rudolf Play Isle, the dead man also murdered in the Southern Horrors. On KARSTWANDERWEG.D the big criminal cases, the death maker Rudolf Play Isle on DOKU-1 DE ARD documentary DOKU the great criminal cases Rudolf Play Isle the total maker YouTube video